Well, good, good afternoon and welcome to Zen Fits on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Blackstone, the center of the world. But then you too are at the center of the world. So the title of this talk is The War of the Two Darwins. Uh, I think that's the title. <laughs> and I've been writing about this all today. Uh, the impeachment, the war of the uh, two parties, the war of the left and the right. It's almost like there's this cataclysmic clash of titans coming together, boom, going over a space of a week. And uh, just like the, the great epics of the ancient civilizations, the Mahabharata, the Iliad, uh, all of these great epics of literature where the forces of titans, of cosmic forces, clash, Armageddon, you know, the rapture and the end of time, and all of these metaphorical is right here in our history it's right now we're watching it but we think oh it's just entertainment oh it's just politics oh well where's the netflix where's the movie it'll pass just politics just uh, hoax just uh, uh, the, you know false news it's all tv but was 9-11 tv when you get cancer, is that TV? Was Pearl Harbor TV? See, so this whole idea that it's just TV is not really getting to what's going on in our history right now. So I'm framing this kind of like as the War of Two Darwins because I realized today that um, you know from my reading and study of uh, Zen and uh, particularly Albert Lowe. Zen master that I highly recommend, um, who did a whole book on this, The Evolution of uh, uh, Man, where he talked about the two Darwins. Now, the first Darwin is the one everybody latches on to, the survival of the species, survival of the fittest, and that's Trump. He got elected because he beat out all the other uh, Republican challengers, one after another, like a bullfighter, like a matador. <laughs> I remember my, uh, my, my wife's brother had a uh, Doberman, female Doberman pincher, big Doberman. And he had some, and it was the dachshund, and the male dachshund, and he kept trying to mate with this Doberman, and she'd just flick him off. <laughs> so Trump was like that, just flicked him off. You see, so the the framework you see of our politics now has been framed in the terms of the first Darwin. This is a survival of the fittest. You see, the strongest man wins, and he dominates the field now. Buck up, liberals! You lost. <laughs> you see, but that's not the complete Darwin. The complete Darwin was his other emphasis was on the survival of the species, not individual dogs, but the species, you see, in relationship with nature, with the environment. And this survival was, was, strong, was more primary than the species. They both worked together, but the survival of the whole was interrelated, and it, and it moved by gestalts. Now here's an example of how gestalt works through... Uh, Seeing through grasping of a larger whole through MacGyver. MacGyver was a gestalt TV character. He'd be in a fix and he didn't just, I, I need something to get out of this uh, hole, you know, or something. I need to get something to get out of the room. So he didn't just take a key and keep jamming it into the hole when it didn't fit. You know, he would look around and he would have a gestalt. He would see that thing and that thing, disconnected things. And he would see a gasol, put it together, have a tool, and get out. That's Darwin, the second Darwin. <laughs> got a they got a study of a chimpanzee, put him in a cage. Put a banana out there, the chimpanzee's hungry. Put a stick in there. The chimpanzee reaching for the, for the hung, for the thing, he just keeps reaching, can't. He has a gestalt. He grabs the stick, pulls the banana to him, you see. That's greater unity. Survival through greater unity, greater holes, 
through seeing, not through ding, 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 fighting to the finish, to the death, you see. So Trump is basically the first Darwin, the survival of the fittest and the dominant of the alpha male, you see. But the whole of America is being destroyed because the other half of Darwin is left off. The other half is towards unity, towards the gestalt that uses the values of the left and the right to create a bigger America. Not eliminate the values of the left, destroy them, demonize them, cast them into hell, shoot them, put them in cages, you see, put a wall up, you see, so, so just the values of the right survive. No. The survival of America is the gestalt that sees a new whole, a new America, a birth of a new America, using the values of the left and the right. But that whole, that new, is a discovery. We don't know what it is. It hasn't existed yet. So we cling to what we know. But right now, this battle between the titans, the left and the right, the liberals and the republicans, the conservatives, you see, it's really a battle that's like this. It's not really this, although we think it is. We think it's two realities, two worldviews that are equal, like fair and balanced, like Fox. You know, if we put one up, well, if you put evolution up here, scientists there, and you put a minister up there with creative design, and they're equal. Put them in a classroom and let the students decide. That's crazy. <laughs> Because it's putting one set of, a vertical set of values on a horizontal planning field. Well, oh, that looks like a cross. It's putting horizontal values, which is science, with vertical values, which is personal values, you see. Personal values. Meaning for me, meaning and value is vertical. Horizontal is science. How do you get something done? How do you control the nature? How do you control the future? How do you fix this disease? How do you build an air conditioner? That's vertical, cause and effect. That's horizontal. Vertical, you see, is now. What does this mean to me? What is my value in this, you see? So my value has been put on the horizontal plane and competing with horizontal values. And they don't communicate. So the Republican Party has made itself the value party, your values if you're Republican. But then your values as Republican are conflicting with the values of the left, you see. So now you've got a value war. And they made the strongest value win. But the values of the left are not the same values as the right. The values of the left lean, now lean, lean towards the whole, inclusive, all people. The values of the right lean toward individual, my values. In my, I'm an individual, my value, my rights, my freedom, you see. So there's always a my there. And on the left, there's always a we. So you got the we versus the my. You got the individual versus the whole. These are two Darwins. The whole survives by greater and greater gestalts. The individual survives by beating the hell out of that other dog. <laughs> you see? Two different struggles there. Both are valid. Now which one is the dominant one? Which one is the, which is the primary one? You see, both of them there, but they're not equal. Otherwise, it would just be uh, an American carnage, everybody killing everybody, you see. There would be no progress, no love, no compassion, no unity, no empathy. It would all be just shoot the other guy. So what is the, what, the two values here? Why are they both needed? Well, you need competition. You need struggle to excel as an individual. You need, you need to uh, uh, have sports and, and challenges and contests and games and teams and yay, I'm number one and all of that, you see. But then the society as a whole has to evolve has to be in alignment with nature, has to be in a, a country, has to be in alignment with other countries, with the globe. It can't be out of sync with the rest of the world unless you want to be a Hitler. 
you see. So there is a um, two different struggles for evolution, the evolution of the whole and the struggle of the individual. But, the, but what's happening is that they're put on the same playing field and competing against each other, like putting evolution and creative design in the same classroom and asking children to choose which one is true. <laughs> that creates a neurosis. The kids go, oh, well, 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 I don't know. <laughs> they throw their hands up. Or they get in a fight and kill the other, you know, go out and, you know, whatever. But that, you see the point. So what we're, what, what, what we're looking at here with the trial of Trump is the clash of two Darwins. One Darwin is thinking in towards the uh, greater and greater holes that combine the, the values of both so competing sides. And the other one is thinking about the, the, the uh, uh, struggle and the survival of individual freedoms, which have been lumped now into a party. So that party now is kind of like a great big me. The party, Republican Party under Trump has become a me party. And my values are more important than your values, and you are a demon, liberals, demons. You know, you can watch this happening. I'm very concerned <coughs> of the demonization of Democrats and the liberals. Because it's a religious demon. It's not a political demonization. It's a liberal. It's a religious one. My end of my evangelical nephew or <coughs> re uh, relatives, that, who both of them are dead now, but I, I learned a lot about evangelicals, and they saw so humanism, liberalism, secularism, the modern world was evil. God was kicked out. You've got to put God back in there. The center is God, not man. Humanism. The Greeks. <laughs> you see what I mean? There was no compromise. It was a war to the death. Because it's as existential. It's your soul. You know, it's the war to the death. You can't compromise with evil, with demons. But then, <laughs> you see, our society is a secular democracy whose founding fathers created a system of compromise, of gestalts. So you have the competition of two views and you get a gestalt, which gets a whole, a bigger picture that includes the best of both parties, and you move forward. Boom. This was the dialectic of Hegel. Thesis, one view. Antithesis, another view. They struggle, they compete, they argue. Then, boom, a synthesis is created that includes the best of both. And, you, and then that breaks down into thesis and antithesis. A new whole, and it goes on. So you go two, one, two, one. That's history. But what's happened today is it's two, and we're going to stay here till we eliminate that. <laughs> and that's what this trial is about. Do we continue for another 50 years the cultural war of stagnation and gridlock that we've been in for the last 50 years since Nixon? Or do we have a gestalt, a 2020, and move on to a greater America and just bypass the dysfunction? Let it die on the vine. That's what we're looking at here. That's the cosmic struggle. And it's very existential. It's not just entertainment. It's not just TV. And it will not just pass if you watch Netflix. Thanks for dropping in. How was Zen Fit today? <laughs>